Hi, Lauren Grace here, and welcome to the Afterlight Podcast. And I'm joined today by Heather Danielle. She is a certified psychic medium, a healer, a teacher, and founder of Rise Into Your Power. She's also my friend. Her passion is helping others gain a strong connection to their higher power so they can open up to their unique gifts and live a spiritually infused life. She's the author of Anxiety to Angels, a step-by-step -step guide created to assist you in transforming stress into spiritual connection. In her spare time, you will find Heather running, drawing, and hanging out with her husband and son in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. I am absolutely covered in goosebumps. Are you? <laughs> Yes, I am. Oh my gosh, I'm so oh, glad God. to be back. <laughs> it's like, here we go again. Yes, Heather, welcome back. Heather's been on the show a few times. So just for our listener at home, you're probably used to the formula, which is where did your spiritual begin, spiritual journey begin, and then we get into it. But with Heather, we're not really going to go there, frankly, because we've covered a lot of that already. And we have other things to discuss. So Heather, welcome to the show. Today, I really wanted to focus on spirit guides, angels, keeping our energy clear, rising into our power, which is totally on brand with what you're all about. But before we kick off that, why don't we sort of start off with the card for today? What do you think? Do you want to do a little mini reading for our listener at home before we kind of get into the goods? Oh, you know that cards are my jam. I, I was do. like looking around and I think, I don't know, maybe I'm even passing the 200 mark with my card deck. So I wow. am a little bit of a card junkie. So it was so funny that you wanted to talk about, you know, spirit guides and angels today, because I was literally sitting here looking at a card deck that I have recently gotten. I don't even think that it's out right now. And it's the Kyle Gray, the 22 Archangels Oracle. So I feel that someone, Lauren, is really, really yeah. connected. So I Here actually already pulled a card for us and it could not be more perfect. So the card that I actually pulled is faith and it says moving mountains. Now, one thing that I learned about faith, apparently she's the divine counterpart to Archangel Michael. And she's part of like the Holy like Trinity alongside of charity and hope. But what I love with faith is that she's saying to trust in your ability to create miracles. The impossible is becoming possible is her message. And one thing that I think that she really wants to drive home right now is that your prayers are being heard and answered. So no matter what, if you think like, okay, you know, they're not hearing me, things are not going right. It's like, no, they are hearing you. They are getting that message. So that even though you might not be able to hear them, they can definitely hear you. And so it's almost like that song that was really big in like the nineties, that country song. It's like, thank God for unanswered prayers. So if those prayers aren't being answered, then you're asked to look around, you know, what can you modify? What can you move just a little bit? you know, to get the energy flowing in the way that you want to. And then also just keep on having that faith that even though you might not be able to hear, see them and those kinds of things, that they are there supporting you, loving you and guiding you. Oh, what do you think of that, that message? So good. I love that. What an awesome delivery as well. I want to share with you too, that a couple of days ago, I had this dream and I was in this like semi truck and I was being driven somewhere and we were driving along this icy road and then all of this water was there and it was freezing ice and we were going up and down. And normally I get motion sickness, but I remember being like, oh, it's like I'm on a roller coaster. And I was going boom, boom, boom. And we passed a couple of dogs that were like frozen in the ice, but I couldn't save them because we were going too fast. And I remember thinking, oh my God. And the, the driver said to me, I think they probably shouldn't have opened the road yet. Like the road isn't safe to drive on. And we were going on it. And I remember thinking, I just might die. I think I'm going to die here. This is the end. And I called in Archangel Michael. And I was like, Archangel Michael. Archangel. And there was blue light over everything. And then we just went boom. And we sailed through everything easily. And then I was at my destination and I continued on. And I remember thinking to myself today about that dream. And I'm like, ah, oh, Archangel Michael's really wanting to connect with me more. And I do call on his energy quite a bit. And I know he's a lot about life purpose and strength and cutting cords, energy clearing and stuff. So it's just funny that you got faith today as the counterpart to Michael, because I was even saying to Michael today, I was watching this blue, beautiful light about you know, if you wanted to show up and give me a sign. And I think faith is like the most perfect message. 
Yes. And one big thing that I think is in common with your dream and also the message that I just got through this card is that we have to remember to also pray, you know, so whatever term that you want to use, but it's like, we also have to make sure that we're asking for that help. And one um, story that I absolutely love to tell is I was, you know, working hard and I'm in the middle of things and I have this big meeting coming up and all of a sudden I get a text from my son and my son's like, mom, I need you to pick me up. You know, this and this happened. And, you know, I can sense a lot of craziness from my son's side. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what to do. Someone needs to pick my son up, but I have this meeting at work. And all of a sudden I asked my husband, you know, could you please pick him up? And my husband's like, no, I can't pick him up because I have, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then I start getting angry at my husband and then we start fighting. And so now all of a sudden it's such major chaos. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to call my boss up, tell him I can't make it to this meeting. And I'm just going to suffer the consequences. Luckily my boss understood, but now I'm leaving my house angry with my husband, you know, stressed mm -hmm. out with my work situation. And as I'm driving, my son texts me, he's like, Hey, mom, I got it figured out. Don't worry. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, if I wouldn't have gotten so caught up in the moment, maybe if I would have asked for spirits help, all mm -hmm. of this chaos could have just been avoided. Because what if I just sat for a moment, Maybe if I prayed and just said, hey, Archangel Michael, spirit guides, you know, can you hear me right now? If so, please get, guide me to what would be best for the situation right now. And then yeah. I might have gotten, you know, just chill, you know, your, you know, tell your son just to wait a few minutes, you know, see what you could have done and what kind of miracles that they could perform on the other side. And that's so that's so usually beautiful. how I use my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, that was a good lesson for you and a good story to share with other people about the importance of taking that moment and remembering you don't have to do everything yourself. I was listening mm -hmm. to a podcast with Gabby Bernstein and Radley Valentine most recently. Have you heard that one yet? No, but that's a dynamite oh, duo right there. Yeah, di definitely. And it was so good. And I think you'll appreciate this. So Radley was talking about something that he created. Some, I think it's called an angel prescription or something of that nature. And what he does is he talks about having an angel in each. Like if you imagine a box of energy around you, let's say that you have an angel in each, each section. And he uses this example in there. They were talking about somebody who might want to receive abundance, prosperity, and like a little bit of assistance in that way. So then he starts to say, he goes, okay. and I was like, oh, are they talking to me right now? <laughs> you know, It's always like that. And I'm going, okay. And I'm thinking, and so I'm listening and listening. I'm like, okay, these are the exact things that I'm wanting to, you know, really put, um, put effort into manifesting at the moment. So he goes, okay, so what you do is you imagine in your back left corner you got Archangel Michael and Archangel Michael is standing there and he's so powerful and he's strong and he's um, protecting you but he's also about life purpose and then in the front left hand side we've got Archangel Ariel now we know that Ariel is all about you know earth spirit um, animals nature but also with nature we've got that earth element so we've got the element of material material good material gain abundance wealth that sort of thing so she's in the top left and then in the back right we've got Archangel Uriel now I don't know about how you see Uriel a lot of people talk about him in gold I see him in gold and red together but a lot of like so it's like a, a lot of um it's almost like gold and then the whole outside is like red shimmer anyway he's in the back right hand side and Uriel I'm not I don't work with him a lot so I'm really looking forward to get to know him a bit better but he's all about transformation and, you know, getting ready for the next stage. And then in the front right-hand side, we've got Raguel, who I also don't work mm. with very much. And he's all about helping people with um, meeting people who are going to help them and helping smooth out relationships and things of that nature. And he's in a light, beautiful blue. And so when I heard that idea of having your angels in each corner, I just went, wow, that just seems to me like a total powerhouse set up for success. And I know today I did that and I had this, do you remember back in the day we used to have that show and it was like, go planet. It was like earth, wind, fire. Oh my God. That? I think and they so. Had as soon as you started planet, yes. Captain yes. Planet, he's our hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh so anyway, my God. So they all had like a superpower rings or something. They would come together and go boom. And then all of their powers would unite and it'd be like Captain Planet. And then Captain Planet would like emerge from the, um, the powers that be, you know, I, I might, I'm sure a listener at home is like, girl, that's not exactly how it went. But anyway, the, the idea is there. So 
when I did that today on my walk, because I was like, God, you know, what should Heather and I talk about today? And, you know, and then I did the quadrant thing and then I saw them all go up with their energy and I was like, boom, encased in this gorgeous box of light, high vibe energy. And I thought, ah, oh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Oh, that is so cool. And what a blast from the past. Like, I didn't remember it. And I feel like you remember it very, very detailed. So that is so amazing. And I love that you had that experience. Um, and that's the thing is like, I feel like people can really have those kind of experiences. And I think it's number one, just that kind of like what we were talking about, like that faith and having that trust, you know, mm -hmm. that everybody has this connection. And one important thing that I hope everybody knows too, is that, you know, earth is tough, you know, it is tough. It's a crazy kind of plan. It and it's something that's completely different on the other side. And we don't come down here alone. You know, I used to call it the spiritual posse. And so it's also oh. called a spiritual entourage, you know? So it's like, we're each set down here, almost like we're each one of these celebrities, you know? So just think of yourself as like JLo, Kevin Hart, you know, whoever comes <laughs> up, you know, they're never, they're not just walking around by themselves, you know, they have all these people, you know, to help them out. And that's kind of like how I see us, you know, we're walking around on this earth, which is a very hard planet. And we have this little entourage, you know, at our disposal, but it's like, almost like put them to use, you know, they're here to help you. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I love that visualization. I mean, one of the things that I think I forget to do sometimes is call on my angels every day. And I, I feel that I pray a lot. I'm always talking to them and stuff like that. But I don't know if I, you know, when I brought in the quadrant today, I went, ooh, and it, it was like this infused with superpower kind of thing. But I think some days we kind of forget, oh, wait, I don't have to do it all on my own. And I remember talking to someone, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And they, I think it was in, um, it was in the episode I did on forensic mediumship with, with Sheila Marie. And she was talking about how one of the, the challenges we have is that when we are asking God for help, but we're not really open to receiving it, it's because we don't trust that God's going to have like the best plan. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, and I think it's almost our human side that goes, oh, if I relinquish control and for me, control as an Aries is, is a big thing. Uh, you know, it's not going to go the way that I want it to, or it's not, even though on a higher level, I know it's all going to according to plan. Yes. And it's so hard because a lot of people that, you know, listen to like your show, listen to my show, you know, what it's hard is because a lot of us have some kind of Betray tra betrayal trauma in our past so it makes us even um uh harder to trust people even in the physical realm as opposed to in the spiritual realm because then you can't even see them and one thing that really helped me was starting with something small and then working my way up it's not like now i trust spirit you know spirit guides my past loved ones my angels all different kinds of guides you know no matter what but it's like i didn't do that overnight you know, I started giving them small little jobs, you know, so whether it's going to be help me get to this appointment on time, you know, help the traffic not be so bad, help me with my temper, whatever it is, praying to them at night, whatever it is. And then the more that you start establishing that relationship and we can go into it a little bit more deeper, then all of a sudden they start becoming like your friend, you know, and I always kind of use this analogy that it's kind of like dating, you know? So at first, when you first meet someone and you establish that relationship, you, you're you not going to trust them right away. You know, if you're on a blind date with somebody, you're not going to be like leaving your kids with them and all this other kind of stuff. You're going to have to get to know them. So you have to kind of go on these spiritual dates. So go on spiritual dates with your spirit guides and your angels and get to know them. And then after some time, you're going to grow into like a real relationship. Then after a while, you guys are going steady, you know, um, and then you guys are exclusive. And then all of a sudden you're going to feel like you guys are married now. And then after a while, and I know you probably feel the exact same way, Lauren, as I do. It's like, I feel like I'm an old married couple, you know, with my spirit guides and angels. Like, it's like, no matter what, I know that they're always there, you know, and it's just kind of, I don't want to say the same old, same olds, but it's just this deep love and this connection so even sometimes when you know I'm not purposely you know connecting I know they're always there and the communication is yeah. always open yeah so I love this yeah. <laughs> yeah that's absolutely right I love that and I think that you know one of the things that we do get caught up with is like you were talking about is the challenges of being here I think one time on the show you actually referred to it as earth school you know when we're oh, here yes. and we're going to school and we're learning all these lessons and they're not always easy and I think sometimes it can be really challenging for us to navigate life as a human, know that everything is divinely ordered and it's all good. And then to marry the two concepts together 
what are some things that you do in your everyday life to kind of keep your energy high? And I shared with you before we hit record that I've, I'm feeling a little bit flat at the moment, which isn't, you know, sometimes I go through this and I can see, I definitely can see all the things that I'm not doing <laughs> that I could be doing, such as a regular yoga practice or clearing and cleansing my energy a lot more often or meditating more, right? There's all these things that we know that we can do. And then sometimes we get out of the habit and we go, oh, I don't feel myself when we, I'm not wondering why, by the way, I'm very clear on what's happened. Oh my gosh. Okay. I just love that question too. And I don't think that you're alone with how feeling flat, you know, cause I feel like a lot of us just go in the same kind of waves, you know, um, inside of the spiritual community. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit of what I do every day. And then if I start feeling flat or feeling off, I'll tell you what I change up. So every single morning I wake up and I always am talking to spirit. That's the very first thing, you know, so I don't do any kind of rituals. I don't do any kind of, you know, really meditations unless I really feel guided to my job is basically to talk to spirit all throughout my day. And so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm always playing intuition games. So I'm always keeping the, the line of spiritual communication open. So this is talking about, you know, getting, you know, where's the good parking spot at my gym, you know, um, how should I design my workout? So I do this all throughout the day. I go ahead, I'm shielding my husband's energy when he gets all crazy. I'm shielding the TV because I can't handle what he's watching. Um, I'm making sure that I'm, you know, a clear vessel, all these little things. I'm always playing with my intuition and I'm always, you know, kind of communicating with um, spirit because I feel like I need to live in the flow. So of course I always like pray at night. I do my boundaries and that kind of thing. But if I'm feeling flat, then the thing that I do is I try to sometimes go into some of those um, more structured spiritual routines. That's one of the first thing I'll do. So I'll be doing some more meditation. I'll be doing automatic writing. If those things don't work, which usually they do, then I know that I am probably taking life too seriously and I need to have some fun. And it's not going to be what we think. We think that fun is going to be eating, you know, a tub full of ice cream, you know, watching Netflix, you know, that is fun. But what I've heard recently Laughter. from a guest on my own podcast is soul care. And I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. we need to fuel our soul. And then so oftentimes we get caught up in some other things that we think are the right thing or, you know, um, serving others that we forget about, okay, what is truly making me happy in this moment? Because we're humans being, right? So that means that we're always changing, you know, from day to day, even in the smallest capacity. So it's like, what is going to fuel my soul right now? Because maybe you did do too much, you know, and your, your cup needs to be filled up, you know, maybe, you know, you're wanting a little bit more freedom and spice and that kind of thing. And so all of a sudden you got to get that back in. So I have gone like rollerblading, like one time it's like, man, it's been 20 years since I put on a pair of skates, but it's like, yes, let's rollerblade. You know, um, last week I went ahead and I was like, you know what? There's beginner line dancing at like a nearby <sighs> place. And I like text a couple of my friends and I was ready to go by myself, but I'm like, let's see if they're up for it. Totally were. I mean, it was so much fun. I even got my son to come out. And so now we're country line dancing on a random, you know, Friday night. Um, I'll always go on to like Facebook or Eventbrite and I'll see different events that are going on. And I'm like, yeah, like jump in there and not even just jump into some of those events, but it also gives you an opportunity to meet other people. And it also allows your spirit guides and your angels to bring other people into your life. Because yes. the synchronicities, the coincidences, like what are the odds that you and I are like besties and stuff like that from completely opposite sides of the planet? It's amazing. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't even remember how we originally connected. Actually, I think it was through FEA. Maybe I put out a call. On oh there my gosh! Way That's back when. Yeah. And actually, one thing I wanted to talk to you about today, because I. So I started this podcast in 2020 when I got made redundant and you were on the show within the first couple of months, I believe. And it was when I was, I had taken a four to five year hiatus off spirituality. And when I say that, I mean that I went all in on Eckhart Tolle's work and being in the present because I wasn't, I didn't know how to manage my energy. I was taking on like as an empath, I didn't even know I was an empath and still until I started this show. And you actually taught me about shielding. I never knew about it before. And uh, it's funny to just think about how, how I've gone so long in my life without knowing that skill. But I wanted to share with you this little thing I learned a little while ago and see your feedback Ooh. on that. So when yes. we were talking about shielding, we were talking about essentially setting up like an energy parameter around ourselves. And I remember you were talking about 
um, the way that your shield looks or something like that. And I remember I went and I designed my own shield. And so when I actually teach, I have this program called Master Your Mindset. I get you to design your own shield because it's important that you know what it looks like for you. And I have, I've added layers over the years. So I have like seven layers of shield. But I interviewed this really interesting woman named Susan Corso, who you should have on your show, by the way. I can connect you. And she was talking about how when we set up a shield, we are setting up fear almost because there's this protection element where we're like needing to hold our energy in, right? And so she was talking about using rainbow light. So she was saying that what happens is we've got our chakras, right? And we're engaging with somebody and unbeknownst to us and to them, it's all happening kind of, I guess, behind the scenes. Let's pretend you and I are talking and Heather, you want a little bit of extra courage or something. Maybe on a subconscious level, you're pulling a little bit of courage that I've got in my solar plexus chakra. So all of a sudden now we're connecting there and I'm happy to share with you and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, we don't want to deplete our own resources. So one, one of the things we do, especially as empaths, is we shield our energy so that other people aren't actually drawing on our stuff. So what Susan talks about doing is pulling down this rainbow light and surrounding yourself in rainbow light, source energy, rainbow light. And the idea is that if you need a little bit of bravery or courage or anything from the solar plexus area, I have it in abundance. I have extra because I've taken God's light and I've surrounded myself in this rainbow light. So I'm happy to share with you. So instead of me protecting my energy, I'm going, I have extra to share with others. And I was like, what? I made her repeat it a couple of times, like in different way, because it was so mind blowing, this whole idea. So I'd love to know your thoughts on, on that. Yes. I need to like absorb that a little bit with what yes. you're saying, because I feel yeah. like like, I, I really do like that a lot, you know, from me and my yes. personal way, it's almost like, instead of like, almost like pushing out that courage to other people, it was almost like the opposite, you know, to where it was, it's all about boundaries, to be honest with you. So even yeah. since that day and that time, um, I have learned as well, that shielding is technically not needed. Uh, you know, shielding is almost like a beginner thing with empaths and because it's all about boundaries and energetic boundaries. So I don't shield that much anymore because I'm much more conscious of my energy and where it's at. And I'm much more conscious if somebody is, you know, seeping into my energy, if I'm soaking up anybody's energy. And so it's almost like, you know, the, the, when you were talking, I was getting this like vision of like a yard. And it's like some people need to have a fence in their yard, okay, just because they need to learn about their own yard, their own grass, their own thing. Yes, and wow. they also need to learn like how they're going to keep their grass good and clean and that kind of stuff. And then after a while, they could start taking down the fence and then they will be able to, you know, see people more. They'll be able to interact more because they will have that boundary. They won't need that fence anymore. And that's what happens to me. It's like, I don't even need that shield anymore because I understand as soon as I'm about to start absorbing somebody's energy. But I do like her concept because that's also allowing us the ability to number one, you know, almost like drink from the faucet of source energy, Ooh. which will give us more energy. And yeah. it will also allow us to give more. So I feel like we can definitely but not be of ourselves. Yes, yes, not, not, of, not ourselves. of ourselves, not depleting our energy yes. on any level. Because, you know, as empaths, we're like, oh, I want to fix everyone. You've got a problem here. I know 25 things to do. <laughs> yes. I am curious about how, um, and I'm not sure if you, if she mentioned anything like this, because I'm really curious, because that's such a, that's such a interesting concept that, and a unique concept that I never heard before. So my yeah. question would be like, what about those who um, are, I don't want to say energy vampires, because that's sucking it out still, but also like projecting the energy onto you, you know, mean like pushing their oh, yucky negative energy one. onto you because that's like the number one really reason why there. i'm shielding mm. yeah that's 100 okay. percent. but i would say that if i were to hypothesize i mean when you think about it if you're encased in source light it's almost like anything that's going to hit you is going to be transmuted anyway oh yes there so you go you not even the nose. a thing yes yeah yes. it's not even so a... i love that and what i would say too is play around and see what works for you because it almost yeah. like kind of like what you and I are talking about, Laura, this is like years ago and yeah. that's exactly what worked for us. So now we can be going into that 2.0 version of ourselves. 
Yeah, um, and so I love that too, just because so many of us, we are so depleted, you know, within our energy and that kind of stuff, because we're giving so much and we have these, you know, horrible energetic boundaries. And a lot of us are walking around with dirty energy, you know, which I know that's what we want to talk about as well, because we, you know, bathe every day and you know, our body is clean, but then we don't clean our energy and energy yeah. is all around us. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. What are some ways that you clear and cleanse your energy on a regular basis? In the shower, mostly is the number one yeah. thing that I do. Yeah, yeah, so I just pretend that the light is the clearing, um, clearing down my uh, energy, making it squeaky clean. Going through um, and going on to the drain, I have sage spray that I love to use. I use a kind of like perfume. Um, another thing that I love to do is I love to make sure that I get my emotions out because energy emotions are energy in motion. So we have to make sure that anything that we're feeling is going through us because that is one of the biggest things that I've seen that creates static energy within the body. So that means if you got to cry, freaking cry, cry in the shower, yell in the car, you know, scream in the car, whatever, get some of those energy out, preferably not with other people, because sometimes we just need to, you know, uh, feel the emotion and allow it to go through us. So like yeah. writing, you know, journaling and stuff like that. So usually I'm able to, you know, express my emotions a lot. And like in the shower, when I'm driving, you know, even sometimes meditating, but if I can't do that, then I'll go ahead. I'll even do voice clips on the phone. I will also do, like I said, the automatic writing and then what I'm realizing now is I really need to like see a Reiki practitioner or maybe even a pranic healer um, at least once a month. And I feel like this is something that like all people who are really into the spiritual work um, should do, you know, almost like how, you know, you go to the doctor, you know, and get a checkup. So at the very least doing that with somebody else, like a third party, because a lot of times, you know, we were like, oh, wait, I'm a pranic healer and I'm a Reiki person yeah. and I can do all these healing modalities on myself. Yeah. But I think it's sometimes, you know, what I'm realizing recently is that sometimes it's better to have a third person to come in just in case there's anything inside of our energy field that we're resistant to cleansing or getting rid of. And so yes. that's kind of like where I'm at right now. <laughs> and I'm that's about you. such a good tip. Yeah. Okay. Is that, and I was wondering too, I feel like you do something. I don't know why. That I do what? Like you do something healing. to cleanse your energy. Yeah. Oh yeah. What I, well, very, my normal thing is I bring in Archangel Michael I cut cords in the front, in the back, in the right, in the left, mm. top and bottom. And I normally get him to do like a double chop chop, like not just one, because like, I always, I'm like a double chop chop. And then I imagine in the center of my being, in like my solar plexus area, I imagine that there's like this ball of light and I'll kind of like hit a button and it goes boom. And it's this explosion of light and it starts from the center of my body and it goes out through everything in my room, everything, but it's like emanates completely from me. Because one of the things that I was thinking about is that when we have cords and those cords have roots, why well, like the idea of the light coming from within and exploding outwards, which removes any roots or any attachments may, that may still be there. So that's one of the things that I do. Another thing that I'll do is like go up to source energy in my mind's eye and I'll just like bathe in a fountain of like rainbow light energy or a waterfall and I'll sit there. Another thing that I do is I imagine normally in my mind's eye. So like I'll do meditation and then I'll go up and I'll, I'll imagine this, but I'll imagine this is something I learned from Paul Fenton Smith, but in the center of my eye, the third eye, I'll imagine like a light coming out of that. And you could bring it down through your crown and then out through your third eye, but then kind of like a whirlwind, like a tornado all around you, just going and like clearing everything up around you and kind of letting it all go that way. And then another thing that I do is <laughs> I like just do different things depending on how I'm feeling, but the explosion is like a constant thing. Like if I'm feeling a bit off, I'll just explode light out of me right away and mm. bring in Michael. But one of the things I do as well, which is something I've made up is I'll be in like source light energy. So I'll go up to like the seventh plane or I'll just imagine myself going up and I'll just be there. And I am in my light body. And then I imagine kind of like a, um, like an egg shape, but, but sort of going all around me kind of like encompassing me in an egg shape, but it's like magnetic. And then it goes zoop, and it like sucks out any cords, any roots, anything like that, you know, like you would with like a magnet, it sticks or like a sticky, like a piece of anything sticky that you might stick in, like all of a sudden, like a Biore strip or something like that. Like, yeah, like stick it out. Yeah. So 
So I do that on my full body, my full energy field. And I just go, and I just imagine this light and then I send it up and transform it. But I know from Theta Healing, one of the things I learned as well is you go up to the creator's light and you say something like, um, dear creator of all that is, it is commanded that you clear and cleanse um, my energy, remove any attachments, any wayward spirits, any curses, any fragments, mm. any negative thoughts, anything that's not for my highest good, take it all and transform it in the light and replace it with unconditional love and truth and peace and abundance and health and, you know, whatever you want to do. And then is done, is done, is done, is done. I love theta healing because they always talk about the command which is essentially you using your free will to say, this is how I want it to be. However, you actually witness the work being done on you. So when I witness the, the magnet thing happening, or when I witness, let's say, an angel coming in and clearing and cleansing my energy for me, I'm witnessing that happening. And then I can almost like not have my human mind get in the way of interfering. I can just be the observer and just allow it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I knew you had some good ones. That, that, that is the reason why I was like, wait a second. I feel like you had some. And one of the um, important ones that you really touched on upon is the cutting cords. And yeah. that is like the number one thing that I feel like, like everybody needs to do. Like even before you do like a lot of those other things is because, you know, I had anxiety most of my life and I always felt like I was walking on eggshells and I really didn't know why. And it's because, you know, we get cords with everybody that we meet and it's like, we stay connected unless we cut those cords. And so a lot of people, especially if you have a cord that's really strong between you and somebody else, and then it's like, you are sometimes subconsciously like connecting to them and not even even knowing it. And so even though yeah. you're not even in their presence, you are still connecting to them. So you're like, Oh, Heather, I shielded myself. Yeah. But you have a cord going to this other person. And so yeah. that's a reason why that anytime that I'm feeling funky, I'm feeling off. I start getting anxiety. The very first thing I'll say, like, cut the cords. Like if this is not me and my energy and my emotions, then take it away. And I yeah. wait for like a couple seconds, maybe just like a moment or so. And then I'll see if it subsides, even if it starts going down a little bit and I don't feel it as strong, then that tells me, okay, I'm, I'm connecting to somebody, but if it still stays at the same amount, then I know, okay, it's me. And I'm going to have to figure out oh. the reason why that I'm feeling this way that I am. Oh, that's so good. I feel like the cords yeah. are like perfect. I also um, learned it, from um, a friend of mine, you'll like this. So she was talking to me about the karate chop. So she was like, one of the things you can do is you can go chop, 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 chop. And you can imagine ooh. like you just go chop, chop, chop. Because you know, sometimes people get in your energy and you're like, holy, get out of here, you know? And then I just got to go chop, chop, chop. And then I always shake my hands and like, let it go like, to kind of yes. you know, shake that, shake that energy off, shake it off, you know, spirit fingers or whatnot. Oh, I love yeah. that spirit fingers. Yes. Yeah. It's and good because you want to move that energy out. Yes, exactly. I used to do something similar in the morning. And what it is, is that I would take my hands and I would just imagine that I am moving the energy inside of like where my solar plexus is, like in, you know, your stomach area. And then I would just act like I'm scooping it out, anything that doesn't serve me. And then I would be, Ooh. I'd push it out and I would just imagine it going, you know, back to source energy and that kind of thing. And I used to do this every morning because it's almost like you're allowing yourself to um, scoop out anything that's yucky, especially in this area, because a a lot of us carry yes. a lot of excess energy in that area. And I would always just imagine that my feet or have roots, like every morning I would stand like a tree, you know, just trying to ground myself and then doing that scooping motion, which is very similar to kind of like what you talked about. And these are little things that you could do like every day. It takes no extra yeah. time. Like no, do it like extra. when you're brushing your teeth, like, you know? Yeah. The scooping is great. I think I'm going to incorporate that because I, I feel that sometimes I do need like to do a tangible action, like a real mm. physical action, I mean, to mm. really kind of feel like I can move it on because, oh, that's right. It's kind of like I get almost like an energetic memory. So even mm. if the thing's not there, I my in my mind, I, I remember that. So there's like an energetic memory. And by the way, I you can call in Archangel Zadkiel to come in and help you clear energy and memories. So I, I sometimes if there's like, yeah, Archangel. And also I have this, um, I interviewed this really interesting guy called Ian White, and he's got a company here in Australia called Australian Bushflower Essences. And this is a Bach flower. This Ooh. one here is the flower called Baronia, B-O-R-O-N-I-A. They ship to the States too, by the way. 
And this um, is a Bach flower that helps you to let memories go. So, you know, sometimes we're spiraling and we can't let those old stories go. If you've already cut your cords and you're doing all of that, you could take a couple drops of that as well, which really assists you in, in letting that stuff go. One oh, thing I too you that. mentioned is grounding. Um, this is something that is that I have to really make and I have to really do a, a lot because I'm in my mind and I am learning a lot and I'm a high, like I like to learn all the time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm a lot in my higher chakras, but a really cool grounding technique that I learned from my friend, Andrea, she, okay. So what you do is you imagine you're like, let's say outside and you're standing up straight and you, um, Number one, you would maybe close down your chakras if you've been doing work like spiritual work or whatnot. So you can close them down however you want. You can like um, imagine like a, a light going over and they're all dimming. You can imagine a door on them and you're locking all of them. However you want to do it, front and back, whatever's going to make sense to you. But the technique I wanted to show you is so you're standing straight and in the left hand side of your foot, there's like this beautiful cord that's peeking out and you take that cord and you wrap it three times around your left foot, three times around your right foot, three times from your left foot up and around your shoulder, three times up and around your right foot around your your left uh, your left shoulder, so the opposite. And then you plunge it down, down, down into the ground. And then my girlfriend Martina was like, I had a weight onto the cord. So then what I do is I add this weight onto the cord and I just imagine this leaden weight going, boom, into the center of the earth. And you just go, and you're just like super erect, standing straight up. And you just feel like, yes, I am on the earth. And then one thing you can do is you can imagine source, source light energy coming down all the way to your heart chakra, mother earth energy coming up through that cord, or you just bring it up however you want. And then meeting in the middle. And it's like, you're anchoring as above and below. But then there's like that real nice junk where you're like really here in the moment. Yeah. Yes. It sounds like you're harnessing yourself to the earth. Yes. Which for me, I need to do that. Yes. I th I do too. I think everybody needs to be doing that. You know, so if you yeah. are spacey, if you are forgetful, if you're spending a lot of time <laughs> in spiritual stuff, and that means even binging YouTube and podcast video videos, all those kinds of things, 100%. then what happens is that your upper chakras are just going freaking crazy and your lower chakras are not going, you know, as, as big, you know, that kind of thing as the upper chakras yeah. are, you know, because you're doing all these things. And so one thing that I would add to that, that I've been doing, and I think it would just might um, create a little bit more of like a tangible, you know, memory kind yes. of thing to what you said is wearing an ankle bracelet. So I started wearing oh. ankle bracelets to kind of just keep on reminding me that I am grounded. And so oh. sometimes I'll change it up. I might wear hematite one day. I might wear whatever it is, but I'll keep something around my ankle and it helps out so much. In fact, yes. um, I had major anxiety driving on the freeway. I had gotten over it. I talked about it in my book, Anxiety to Angels. And then recently it started coming back up again. And I could not figure out the reason why. Now, sometimes we go ahead and we think that we're smarter than spirit. We think that we know we can figure it out and those kinds of things. I don't know why we so lied to ourselves. Well, I finally freaking meditated on it after freaking years, you know, and spirit, it's like you're ungrounded. And I'm like, are you serious right now? Are you saying that I've been having to pop Xanax, you know, while my husband drives down the freeway, I've been having to like go to the doctors. They're like, you are ungrounded. And so I was like in Florida and I was meeting with my spiritual community and stuff like that. And I had to drive on the freeway. So I grounded beforehand. I wore an anklet to remind myself and I could drive on the freeway the whole time. And it yeah. was like, oh my gosh, of course, because the freeway is fast moving. There's a lot of energy on the freeway. And I'm not scared on the freeway when there's a lot of cars and it's like a lot of traffic and we're moving really slow. I don't feel scared. I only feel scared on the freeway when there's a whole bunch of cars moving really fast. And, you know, yes. and then it's because... I'm already ungrounded. You're in I'm fight already... or flight. You're like on guard. Yes. You're going. <gasps> and plus when you can see spirit, like we can, you're like, shit, there might be people coming, you know, like there's so much oh happening my gosh. all Too around. Much. 
yeah, too much. too much. And so I started wearing the anklet that helped out a lot. I have to like really make sure that I'm really grounded. But, you know, last night we were driving on the freeway and I wore an anklet and I also had on these heels that had like an ankle strap too. And so my mind kept on going to, you know, okay, I'm grounded. I'm grounded because it's not something that I really do often. So I noticed it and I did not have any anxiety at all. And that was I'm something that, that is unheard of. <laughs> yeah, so I need, thank you. That is such a great tip. And another thing you could do, and then I want to change the subject here is you could also use different essential oils. So like a really, like a woody kind of, I really want to talk about frankincense only because I have it here, but you could actually put that on the bottom of your feet as well as like a way of connecting with the ground and where your feet are. And also I learned recently, because I was in an essential oil workshop that you can put when you put essential oils on the bottom of your feet, it's actually that the pores are bigger there. And that's why it gets mm. into your blood circulation faster. So if you're ever thinking, why do I do it? It's that's why is because it can, it can activate a lot faster in your blood. One thing I'd love to know from you, Heather, and you did talk about earlier, like version 2.0 of us, which I just think is so great. And I think that that's when we give ourselves permission to continuously evolve and change. I think it also allows us to be a little bit more compassionate with things that we used to think or the way that we used to be, because it's like, well, I'm still evolving, you know? And I think Wayne Dyer was talking about how like our skin rejuvenates or our cells or something like that every seven years. So we're never the same mm -hmm. person for very long, if you really consider that. But I'd love to know from you, is there anything that you've learned recently, any aha moments? Because I got one I want to share with you, but I want you to go first Ooh. about anything that you kind of, are you looking at the world in a different way? Did you get any information lately? Have you talked to a soul, you know, that's passed over, that's come through, that was just like a real confirmation of, of love, of source of whatever? Yeah, I'd love to know what's on your mind. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm excited to hear yours because you know that totally happened and I think what really drove it was menopause. I had to have a surgery that put me into menopause and that oh, kind of you're because you're young. Yeah, I, I, well, I had a hysterectomy when I was 30. They left an ovary in. And so then it oh. was a couple of years ago. So I think I was 36. And, you know, here I am getting to just thrashed into menopause. And it was so horrible because now, you know, you're gaining the weight and you don't feel like yourself and you have these hot flashes and all these things are happening. And it was a really, really tough time because people were making fun of me because of my weight. And people oh. were, you know, talking about how old I must be because, you know, now I'm in menopause. And like, like all these things and it really really hurt me but then as I just kept on like growing and doing a whole bunch of different things I realized like wait a second I am going to become a 2.0 version of myself and I was like I am going to change anything that does not make me happy and I'm going to change it you know to things that make me happy not other people so if I was happy with my weight or if I was happy with the way I looked you know and felt then I would have been like who cares what anybody else thought yeah but the truth is is that I really sat down with my Myself and I was like, Heather, what do you want? And one thing I've always wanted was, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I've always wanted to be a bodybuilder, you know, one of those in the yeah. bikini um, bodybuilders. Girl, and so I was like, okay. get it. <laughs> yes. And I had actually started trading in 2019, but then my mom ended up passing away and, you know, my coach, you know, kind of um, ghosted me. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So almost like a year ago, I started working with a bodybuilding coach. I have been prepping for my first bodybuilding competition. I am like, I kept on thinking every single day, once I cross over and I'm looking back on my life, you know, what would I have regret not doing? Because I read a book once that said, you know, people, who are dying or even on the other side too, they don't really regret a lot of things they did. They regret the things they didn't do. And so I was like, oh my gosh. Oh. And so finally I started opening up. So I'm like, okay, check on the health, you know, check on feeling good with appearance. Okay. What else is there? And it's like, I need to spread my message that, you know, past loved ones, angels, spirit guides, they're all around you, you know, so start having more fun in life. And so I'm like, okay. So all of a sudden opportunities came in yesterday. I did my first mediumship gallery event to a sold out crowd of like 65 to like 80 people. It was freaking Amazing. nuts, you know, Amazing. And Congrats. It was 
it's so cool. And so now all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, life is a game, you know, do you, you know, how do you want to play it? And so it's like, yeah. you know, I just released an episode on my podcast. That's like, earth is like high school, you know? And we think that high school is just like the end all be all and our relationships there and stuff like that. And so it's like, earth is like your high school right now. You're in high school. Like what kind of, you know, things do you want to do for me? I want to do everything. You know, Johnny Depp said, you know, someone asked him once, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said that I want to be everything. So then when you look oh. at all of his characters and you, you know, you see, okay, he was a pirate. He was a writer. He was Edward Scissor's hands. He was all these things. And I'm like, you yeah. know what? I want to do that. So now not only am I training for the bodybuilding competition, but I have been dancing so much. I'm like, you know what? I want to, I want to have a, my own recital. I'm trying to find a dance company that does, you know, adults because I want to be up there and I want to invite my husband and my friends and my family to see me in a dance recital. I wasn't able to do that growing up. We didn't have any money, you know, everybody else got to do it. So maybe I want to do that. One of my bodybuilding friends, she just took up gymnastics and she's older than me. She's like 40 something years old. I might hurt myself, but I still want to do it. So I want to do a triathlon. I want to do a marathon. What else do I want to do? You know, just have fun. Don't try and figure out like, well, I don't have the money for that that's too expensive you know no stop selling yourself short you know leave all that stuff up to god you know to your oh. spirit guides to all of them they're the ones i always say spirit is your uber you know so they're in the driver's seat you just tell them where you want to go and they drive you you know you're not looking at your uber being like wait how are you going to get there how is this going to happen no the bill's already paid for just keep focused on what you want that's all you have to do <laughs> That is so freaking beautiful. I love everything that you've just said there. I did this meditation a couple of years ago where I met my future self and they were like, do you have any, they're like, and it was guided. And then they're like, does your future self have any, any information, like any guidance or any wisdom? And my future self said to me, you need to dance more. And I was and like, I've wow. brought up dancing so much. So this is like more of a sign, I think a couple of times anyways. Ooh. Yeah, it is definitely. And I think because dancing is movement, it's moving energy, it's moving that static energy we were talking about a little bit before. It's getting us into our creativity and to feeling into our body, your bite, it's sensuality, it's all of that stuff that dance does. So yeah, I'm really hearing you when you're saying that as well. And I also wrote it down. I was like, you know, I've been thinking about years trying to find a choir here. I just need to bloody well do it, right? <laughs> Oh, yes, you do join a choir. It's not and that it's like, hard. Like, stop fighting it. Cause I fought my dancing for so long. And then it was the eve of my 40th birthday and my husband was going to bed and I was going to bed. And finally I just opened up the bedroom door and I was like, Hey, I'm not coming to bed right now. I have to dance. And he's like, what? And then he's like, okay. So I just put on YouTube videos and I just sat there and danced. I danced yes. to like music when I was a teenager. I danced to everything. I, I like, he didn't care what I danced to. So I was like, yes. And it was a great freaking workout. And it's yeah. a great freaking way to spiritually connect because you're raising up your vibration. So yeah, I love this. <laughs> I had an interpretive dance party in the middle of my lawn a little while ago. Well, I'm like probably last year, actually, for like an hour and a half where I just listened to, and I was just doing like by myself yes! and, and the lawn. It was awesome. Yeah. Yes. I was like, I'm just going to dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> What? Oh, I know. I like, and I love that. I feel like we need to be more of ourselves. So in my 2.0 version of my life, you know, I am going ahead doing whatever makes me happy in the moment, not really caring so much, you know, at all. Like I'm wearing um two different colors of Converse when I go to the gym now, because it's like, I don't care what people think. This makes me happy. I think it's really cool. Brewster and that's okay you know so I feel like I just want to fall in love with myself and who I am and I might change from day to day so I'm really curious what your 2.0 thing it's is it's so funny Heather because it's like whenever we talk it's just like fire and sparks and magic and miracles and I feel that you know it's almost like we're playing tennis where it's like I shoot to you you shoot back to me so you like for example what you just talked about is the perfect introduction into what I wanted to share with you, of course. So have you read Anita Morjani's book, Dying to Be Me? Do you know that book? Been, I've been thinking about that book so much. Yeah, I think I read it twice. Oh, you have? Okay. So, all right. So I'm on my deck. I'm listening to my audio, to the audio book. I'm near the end of the book and I'm mopping, right? And she's talking about the secret of life being to honor yourself and fill up your own cup and, and all that kind of stuff. But then I started thinking about what she was referencing, and you may know more about this than me, which is one reason why I'm bringing it up. 
She was talking about it when she had her NDE that she had a parallel life experience where she was like, had a vision of people in her life in different, let's say character roles for our, our um, spirit, our spirit, our spirit and listener at home. So like she, I think it was like made reference to her brother was in a different role and stuff. And she had like this vision, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I've only heard the book one time. And so I started thinking about that. I was like, okay, so if time is an illusion, which we know that it's a construct that we've made as humans, if time is an illusion, when we tap into past lives, because I've downloaded my own past lives for myself and I've done past life work for other people, when we see past lives, it, they have to almost show up in that way because if they showed up as a parallel life, it would be hella confusing. So I did a personal episode on my show a couple of weeks ago. One of the ways that I explained it, I was like, if we imagine our hand, we imagine that we're the soul, okay? And each of our fingers is like maybe a personality. So right now I'm Lauren Grace. I'm a Canadian in Australia, da, da, da. In another life, I was somebody else. In another life, I was somebody else. So then we've got like all these different facets of ourselves from the one soul, from the one whole, okay? So the way that we interpret past lives is a way that we can compute in our brain that we existed as other souls. But if time is an illusion and parallel lives is actually what's happening, and we're one soul and we're all connected to these different personalities and all of these different, you know, characters, characters really that we're playing, but they're all happening simultaneously. Then what I realize is like, okay, so that must mean that any healing that I do now here is going to heal all my other lives at the same time. And not only that, it's going to also heal my ancestral lines because you know, if time's an illusion, then it's all really kind of like a mishmash of everything all at once all the time. So the more that I can connect with love, the more that I can honor myself, the more that I can feel into my needs and my desires and honor them and do them, then I'm allowing in a way, I'm giving permission for my other lives to do the same. And then it comes in on the flip side, where it's like, I'm starting to be aware that sometimes some of the lives that I've had or am having <laughs> yeah. could be causing some of those challenges with me in this life now. So there are things I have to like heal within myself within those other lives in order to move forward. So that's something that I've been thinking a lot about. Thoughts? Oh my yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's big thoughts. And it's so crazy too, because, um, one thing that's coming up to me is, and, and I hope it's not TMI for anybody, but you know how, like they say that women's cycles sink. It's like, I'm getting the same exact thing with the spiritual stuff, because that's been also showing up on my end a lot. And one thing that mm -hmm. I learned recently is they say that once you've done enough healing, like the trauma, like of this life, like your childhood, you know, like a lot of people call it also like shadow work, you know, once you do a lot of that stuff, your next step is to heal your past life your past lives that also are like happening at the freaking same exact time yeah. and and I just find that so incredibly fascinating and one thing that I have to say is like once past lives keep on coming up that's like your sign you know that maybe perhaps you've done a lot of this healing in this lifetime right now so maybe you've got gotten it good enough maybe you have healed from a majority of things and now it's time to help out yourself you know like almost like yourself in a different area so a lot of times I know for myself, it's really hard to do things for myself. You know, it's like, oh, wait, you know, are used to. And so I think that once you start thinking about it and you are getting those signs that now it's time to, you know, look more into those past lives, you know, or what's going on now. And I think too, there's a little bit of these glimpses of what that is in your everyday life. Like there's no doubt in my mind that my husband is living a life in the fifties at the same time as living this life now, because he's so drawn to it and he talks about it all the right. time. And he's like an 80 year old man and, you know, in the inside, cause that's how old he would be, you know, in the fifties. So I think that's really interesting too, to see what you're, what you're guided towards, like what the past lives bring yes. up to you. Yes. Isn't that I interesting? I love that you brought that up. Yes. Cause it's very often your interests, your hobbies. So like some people have said to me, oh, I've have a real connection to xyz and it's like yeah because there's something there for you within that yeah that's such a great thing one of the things that i do when i am working with people with their past lives which has been quite a few months since i've done any actually client work because i've taken a break but um 
is I'll like see the past life. I'll explain what's happening. I see, I see past lives for me clairvoyantly. So they show up almost like a movie screen in my third eye and I can watch it and I tell the person what's happening. And then what I do is at the time of death or a pivotal moment, I bring in healing. So I bring in and I witness the creator coming in and sending healing, love and light to that situation to really help the healing that's to happen in this current life as well, which now we know is like part of the oneness of all there is in the parallel lives and stuff. How would you attempt or go in and start to heal and work with some of your past lives? Would that be primarily through a guided meditation? Would that just be through a meditation where you like go in and you direct, not maybe not direct, but you go in with the intention of wanting to tap into a particular past life and heal that? Well, you know what? This is like a great question to ask me um, because this is something I haven't done before. So this is something that's Ooh. just now coming into my realm, if you will. It's something that I've been noticing coming up in readings a lot, you know, for other people, been, you know, noticing that, you know, kind of like how we're talking about it, this stuff is coming up. So what I feel yeah. like I'm going to plan on doing is I'm going to try several different techniques because I want to see which one really resonates and works with me. So I've had a past life regression done where somebody else has brought in a past life and I really loved it. It was a group experience, you know, and I felt like it really did help out a lot, but maybe now, maybe I could work with someone one-on-one -on -one to see if I could go a little bit deeper with that. You know, maybe I will try a guided meditation, the kind of like what you suggested, you yeah. know, maybe I'll go ahead and I will look at some kind of like, you know, there's always different kinds of events, you know, going on. Maybe I'll bring myself into a meditation, you know, asking myself, you know, okay, bring me to a past life, you know, even journaling or automatic writing it, you know, going ahead. And I love my Brian Weiss past life deck. That is yeah, one that is just like say. mind. Oh my gosh. And guess what? It's literally right here. Uh, of course it is. Isn't that insane? Like, wow. Like I don't ever, ever have this card deck out right here. So it's crazy that it's here, but it's also proving my point with how past lives have been coming up. Yes, that's so good. Okay. And I feel that I've got a lot of clarity as well myself because I'm realizing, oh, okay. I think that sometimes when we have blocks in our current life and we don't necessarily know why it's because it's not our stuff. And, it, and I'm not saying it's the stuff of other people. It's our own stuff to be rectified from another time. So that's something that I'm going to be doing. And Brian also has some great guided meditations, I think, for free on the Hay House app. I, I have Empower You Radio. So there's like some meditations and stuff like that on there. So, yeah, I guess we'll have to, uh, when we chat next, we'll have to yes. like, see how it went for yes. each of us and see what, what went, yeah, what went on. Well, I'm Heather, I love talking to you. It's so good. Bye. We could talk for ages. And I hopefully our listener at home is like, girl, I was like feeling like we were all just hanging out like a bunch of friends. And that's what this is about. And I feel like that's what Heather and I really, we feel that connection together. Is there anything that you wanted to say before we wrap up here? How can people get a hold of you? I know you've got a podcast now. Please do promote that and um, anything else that's on your mind before we wrap up. Oh, okay. Well, I'll start off first by where you can reach me at. So I am the host of the Spiritual AF Life podcast. So I would love to have you as a listener if you love all the spiritual woohoo stuff. Um, and you can also find me at therealheatherdanielle.com. And I'm Spiritual AF Heather Danielle on Instagram. Or you can find me at Facebook at Heather Danielle Psychic Medium. And I think that the one thing that I want to really leave off with today, as I like kind of tune into spirit to ask them, and it's going back where we started, which is the faith. And it's like keeping the faith and also making sure that you are asking for that help, no matter if you hear them or not, just keep on going, try different techniques. You've got Google, you got Lauren on your side, you got me, you could reach out to us. Yes. We are definitely yes. here to help you, to guide you. So if you are even more confused or you just want to know your next step, <laughs> then reach out. You know, we're here. Like, aren't you, Lauren, you're just, yes, you're just here. <laughs> yes, yes we're here to be of service. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Hopefully you're not more confused, but if you are, then, yes. go ground, get out and nature go have a shower yes and then reach out <laughs> yes you got a whole entire team of spiritual peeps and I always say even if it feels like you do not have a human in this life that you know really got you you know like that you can really trust you got them on the other side and they're yeah. waiting to help you oh that's so beautiful thank you my sister I can't wait for part four or whatever <laughs> can't wait either